Welcome to the Life After Life podcast, where we explore our soul's physical and non-physical journey. I'm Majana. Let's discuss angels, guides, and loved ones from the other side. Hello, Majana and Thomas here, and let's talk about some angels. I love it. (laughs) What a great loving topic. So we've talked about around to all that, (laughs) everything to do with angels, I feel like. And yet so many of these messages bear repeating because we need to hear them repeatedly so that they soak in for one. And it's just good reassurance. And maybe you forget. You know, I've been aware of this myself, having not been aware of it for most of my life. And I still, it still is like not just right there. So yes, these reminders are great. So, and maybe putting it in a slightly different perspective, because another question that comes up is, well, how do I know that I'm really hearing somebody and it's not just my imagination because I want to hear it? Oops. The monkey mind, right? The right. chatterbox. Well, well, that's completely a legitimate question. Now, there are absolutely times that we know without a doubt it's not our mind. We've heard, I mean, I know I have, so I'm assuming you've seen or heard stories of a person that magically appears just at the right time to help somebody out in need and then they vanish and nobody seems to know who they were, where they came from or anything like that. Love those stories, right? Very cool. <laughs> yeah. And what that says to me is don't try to put the universe in a box. Angels have unlimited power so they can take a physical form to come and help you. They can also be a voice in your head that is just, you know, a good voice in your head. And it can just be a feeling. So sometimes is it, well, is that intuition or was that my angel or my guide? And my response is, does it really matter? It is The source is love. It's all from spirit. All of those come from spirit. Here's a an example that, wow, was I ever grateful. This was years ago. I was going to travel on the interstate for about, it was close to two hours. And leaving my small children at home with a friend, this was going to be a pretty quick day trip. So I was about to get on the interstate. I was headed to the interstate, and I just had this seriously nagging feeling, do not get on the interstate. I mean, it was so strong that I thought, okay. So I stopped, and I thought, hmm, maybe I need, maybe something's wrong with the tires. Check the tires. Check the oil. Check my gas. Clean my windshield, put, you know, put more gas in. I'm like, okay, because it really felt like it was so strong. And I had to sit there and I thought, okay, what is it? What aspect? Is it something about me or my body? And kind of tuned in. Nope. Is it about my car? And it absolutely felt like it was something around the car. And I thought, golly. And I was driving a pretty new car. And my thought was, ooh, warranty. There better not be something wrong with this car because, you know, they'll, they'll cover this in the warranty. So it was such a, this just would not go away. Very persistent, very strong. And I literally went to a park, pulled over and just sat there and parked. And and I thought, okay, I don't even know, but what it is, I just know I can't get on there. So I had to just sit and get centered for a while. And then literally all of a sudden it was gone. And I thought, I kind of looked around like, okay, did I just make that up? What was that? So I got on the interstate and headed down. And this was about 15 minutes, probably 15, 20 minutes of time that it took while I was trying to figure out what this feeling was or where this, what the source was. I got down the interstate 15, 20 minutes, and there was a massive accident. A semi-truck, the dry, it looked like the driver maybe had fallen asleep and come, came across the median and hit a car. Oh, Head on. I mean, it was gnarly. Ugh. There were several cars involved, but it was very clear which car that which was hit. And I knew, I mean, as I was coming up on it, the rescue team was just arriving. And I knew, in fact, right now I have goosebumps recalling this. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> with, yeah, every fiber of my being knew that that is exactly what that feeling was about. That car would have been my car. Wow. I know that. So was that my angel, you know, whispering to me and and really, you know, putting, giving me that message or a a spirit guide or was it my intuition? I don't know, but I know I'm very grateful. So 
the source doesn't matter. And we all have access to that. So my point with that story is it wasn't a voice that I heard. I have heard that in times that I'm incredibly grateful also that have saved me from doing something stupid. But this one wasn't. It was a feeling. It was a very strong feeling. And I could have completely disregarded and gone about my way. And possibly an angel would have stepped in and saved me from myself in another way. Because I don't believe it was time for me to leave my little girls without a mom. So probably, possibly, they would have intervened in another way had I not listened to them in this way. But I don't want to take that chance. And I'm asking you not to take that chance. (laughs) Honor it the first time. That is a gift we all have. Your angels are part of your soul team. So you came here with an agenda that your soul you yourself actually created, and so on. When you're having a really bad day, you can thank yourself for that. And your angels are part of that soul team. So you can, you have access to them all the time, and they love you, and they're supporting you. And I know I've said this numerous times, and I love, thank you so much for the responses I get, emails, or even on the the Facebook page, somebody will talk about an experience they had with their angel, and I so appreciate that. So remember to call on them. Unless it's an emergency situation, they can't intervene in your life unless you invite them in. And even if it's not an emergency, invite them in because it's fun and they love to participate. Why not have the help, right? <laughs> I enjoy it. Right, exactly. Um, I, you know, One of my spirit guides used to, when I would cook, I would ask her for assistance with, uh, hey, this needs a spice. What, what should I put in there? You know, little things like that. But they're there, so so ask them, call on them. If you're not sure, you can ask for signs. Would you, like, start leaving me feathers? And then be open to all the different feathers. But don't restrict them and expect it has to look like your version of an angel feather. It can be any kind of a feather. And lastly, it's nice to sometimes, and I do this myself, I will sometimes go get a reading. Because for me, a reading from somebody is a confirmation on what I already know or feel. So that's nice. It's nice to get that. And just know that you have that um, ability yourself. You can get that confirmation yourself. And I hear a lot of people say, you know, I just can't hear. I try and I try and I just can't hear. Okay, I get it. And, And sometimes I can't hear. When you're emotional or you're really stressed, it's hard to hear on your own behalf especially. So we will be putting together a workshop um, to help with that, working with energy to help identify that and connect. In the meantime, just relax and cut yourself some breaks and just kind of be open to it. Maybe ask for some signs and your angels are there, definitely ready to help. So thank you so much. I referred to our uh, Facebook. That is Life After Life Radio is a Facebook group. And then we have a website, lifeafterliferadio.com, and we love hearing from you, questions, podcast suggestions, anything. We're open, and we appreciate it. So we will see you soon. Namaste.